Hi, I'm Ade from Google Developer Relations, and today I'm joined by Jay. Jay, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Hey, Ade, and thanks for having me. My name is Jay Carey. I work for at and and I'm the Vice President of 5G uh, Product and Mobility Innovation. I'm based in Los Angeles, or um, actually just a little bit down the coast in Orange County in uh, Huntington Beach, from the UK originally. Clearly from the accent. Ah, Brighton, clearly from the accent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Why did at and create an AR app like Trickshot Kings? Yeah, so um, when we looked at um, uh, 5G and what customers were doing with 5G phones, we found that it was really centered around speed tests. They were kind of impressing their friends with how fast they could download a file. And we knew that you know, 5G can power so much more than than just that. The, the other thing we were really seeing with um, uh, with 5G is that most of the executions that were really bringing um, the capability to life were centered around an event. So you had to be at a concert or at a, a sporting event to kind of take advantage of 5G. And so with the um, Trickshot Kings, what we did is we kind of moved that to the phone. So we now had something that you could both demo in stores and you know show the power of 5G, um, it, all, it works only on 5G phones, although you could take it off of the 5G network and, and uh, continue to use the capability. Um, but it really also, AR as a capability, really feels forward thinking, it feels innovative, it really matches the kind of um, impression that we want to give with 5G a and gaming, we believe, and particularly AR within gaming, you know, as it grows in data need, as it grows in bandwidth requirement, the, the low lag characteristics of 5G, the high download speeds, all of the things you associate with 5G lend themselves to um, to, to AR. And we, we, we kind of believe in where AR is going. We think it's going to be so much more than the you know, Harry Potter Wizards Unite type capability or Pokemon Go that, that people have been playing. And we think these this world of massive, immersive multiplayer games that need that kind of power and bandwidth will, uh, will become a thing um, uh, you know, when the developer community starts getting behind that. And, and then we also know that kind of VR with the, you know, the headset um, uh, being required, you know, typically played in the home, you do have the possibility to take that kind of power and capability outside of the home with, with 5G. So, we, um, so we we're excited to build something that brought all of that to life. And that's what Trickshot Kings is. Okay. How does 5G power these sorts of interactive AR experiences? Yeah, so um, uh, again, it's really the characteristics of the 5G network that really kind of lend themselves to this kind of execution. So you know, just to uh, kind of outline the characteristics of 5G, you do have massively higher download speeds. So um, you can get on the 5G plus millimeter wave network that we have in 35 cities around the US, in parts of 35 cities around the US, you, you can get gigabit speeds. We've seen speeds of even 1.5 gigabits and you know even even beyond in the future and so so you've got this massive download speed on our nationwide 5g network which is what's called sub six it uses a slightly different kind of um uh, spectrum to power it but again you get most of those characteristics and better download speeds than you would see on the 4g lte network so you know you also have low latency so if you think about you know the massive amounts of data and the interaction with some of the elements coming down from the cloud to you know, to to interact with what you're doing on the device, then it's critical that you have low latency, less jitter, less packet loss. All of the attributes that are kind of associated with 5G really lend themselves to that. Um, and then over time, um, the ability to use what is massive amounts of bandwidth and ca capacity and, and have many many devices connected in one space. And when I say many, it goes from kind of thousands on. Y, uh, on LCE or even hundreds on kind of Wi-Fi to what could be hundreds of thousands or millions of devices. So, so you can now start to interact with the real world because everything is connected around you. And so, again, you can build these really impressive experiences that just go way beyond what you can do with kind of 4G today. So, so, so whilst all those things are um, uh, kind of twinkles in my eye at this point, the, you know, the, 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 the network can support those. and. Yeah, you know, we would love developers to get behind that kind of thing and start bringing it to life in the real world. So, how have consumers reacted to unique apps like Trickshot Kings? Yeah, so we've we've been really pleased. And the great thing about Trickshot Kings is 
it's available on devices. And so therefore we have it in stores. And you know, if you're buying the Samsung Galaxy S20, which is the device I use, then um, then you know you can um, you can demo that in the store, and we get to see them firsthand their their reaction, and the reaction's kind of one of of, of of wow. And I think what really it's doing is it's it's taking a I don't know if you've seen the game, but it takes a a basketball kind of street street ball type scenario where you have buildings and a little basketball court outside, and you can throw the ball and hit it off buildings and trash cans and other things to try and score. Um, a, a kind of a basket, and so, but that all happens on a table in front of you. So now you've got um, you've moved from playing a game on the device to the device being the the way you interact with what feels like the real world because it kind of feels like it's in the store and you're and you're kind of playing playing the game. And so, so again, that creates some kind of wow effect. So speaking about the future a little bit, um, what sort of step changes do you expect to see in consumer apps because of five G? Yeah, so I think um, in the short term, what we'll see is more of an evolution of the things I do today being better um, or, or really enabling things that kind of exist today, but I can only do them at home. So a great example of that might be Google Sadia, actually, that, um, uh, that, that comes from your company. And the, uh, uh, the, uh, for those who don't know it, it's a console quality gaming, but delivered from the cloud without the need for a console. And so, um, yeah, that delivers really great experiences over Wi-Fi, but the 4G network and the latency characteristics of that network uh, are in some cases not optimized for that level of intense graphics. And you know, and again, the uh, low latency can be the difference between you getting to the next level or kind of dying a horrible death in the game, right? If it's a shooting game, so, or crashing your racing car, whatever whatever it is you're, you're kind of playing. And so, um, so, so again, I think, um, the, four, the, the 4G network can, can power some of that, but the 5G network just does that so much better. And so that's a today experience could be better. Other experiences, streaming video, just the, you know, the, the lack of buffering in that, the ability to deliver higher definition or higher quality um, video to the device, the, the, the quality being good enough to be into a, you know, a, a, a 60 inch TV because of the, the, you know, the, the, the graphics that I'm able to deliver now are just much better. And, you know, I can do that when I'm on vacation with a Chromecast, for example, you know, uh, on, on the network. And so, so that's examples of kind of today being better. I think then as you kind of look into the future, it kind of, um, uh, you know, some of that we don't know, right, which is kind of what I was coming back to. The 4G network, you know, we provided the network and then the developer community helped us understand that things like ride ha uh, hailing apps were going to kind of be a, be a thing. Um, and so, so, yeah, we're excited to see whether community goes, but there are some, you know, I'll just throw out some examples of how we think about um, where the world is going, which could be these massive multiplayer, immersive real world games that, again, coming back to what we talked about, that could be AR powered, that don't constrain you to a location, that have quality of graphics that are way beyond anything, um, you know, we have today that, you know, appear as if they're in the real world. And, and then you could even take that to the next level with smart glasses eventually and AR glasses um, could change the way we interact with the world and the type of device that we do that through. And so you could imagine glasses, first of all, allowing that gaming experience potentially. Um, you could imagine glasses giving you information on everything you look at in the world around you. You could imagine kind of video calling holographically with, with those glasses. So again, the possibilities of that are really kind of interesting. So I just have one more final question. Which 5G device are you using? Um, so right now I'm using the Samsung S20 Plus uh, 5G. I also have the Note uh, Ultra, um, uh, Note 20 Ultra, which is a great phone as well. The screen is amazing on that. This one fits really nicely in the wireless charging pad on my in my car, so I'm using this one uh, at the moment. It's a great device. It has both the uh, 5G nationwide uh, sub six capability that we that we have, and then it also takes advantage of the 5G Plus because it has both capabilities in the 35 cities where we where we have that. So um, yeah, so like the phone a lot. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Ooh.